And I went through an agonizing process of meeting advertising agencies, PR agencies, creative agencies, God knows who, to try and work out what the business meant and how to get it right. And uh, I, I could tell you 10 stories. I think the worst of which was an hour long presentation, which we paid for, with a lot of research being done. And the girl, I think she was 26 or 27, was going on and on and on. I thought it was going to be the most amazing moment. And at the very end, she said, Your brand is about no bullshit. And we had to. <laughs> <laughs> we had that, and that was our strategy. We had to orientate, and I had to communicate that. We had to orientate our future around those uh, sacred words. Um, uh, John, who I met as part of this process, clearly had done 36 hours work before coming in. And it was proper contextual stuff. You know how marketing people and creative people like to come up with the answers, like no bullshit, or hear two or three words to describe it. That, that's the answer. John had actually done the work and had thoughts and reasons and arguments and counter-arguments. I thought, my God, okay. When John presented and subsequently comes up with ideas for we're looking at a new business, it's not just two or three ideas, it's ten. And half of them are mad and half of them are really. But actually that doesn't matter because it keeps us on our toes, means that we're thinking. And again, he's not saying, here's the magical answer. He's saying, well, here are a range of thoughts, which actually I've put quite a lot of thought into. Now let's see if by some way of osmosis we can get towards the answer. And the other point about John is he understands the maths. And I have never met that in a creative book to understand that you know, there's a profit and loss, and there's a balance sheet, and if you do this, it's going to cost that. So I'm a pretty major shareholder in the business. I've never much bothered with the board. And John is the only non-executive I've ever invited to join me on the board in 15 years in the Ministry of Sound. And the results speak for themselves. When I came back in August of 2004, we flattened our arms. We are now motor. And John's mantra is, look, let's just put aside all this rubbish. Brand is fun, it's about music, it's about some good packaging, it's about some good marketing, just get on to it. And we have moved from a niche dance music brand into all sorts of product areas and all sorts of places internationally. As I speak, we're building our new hip candy bar in Beijing. I, I could actually give you a dozen examples. So that the, the business was like that, and we're now spread out across an amazingly wide front. And I'm deeply grateful to John for that. I didn't actually want to say too many positive things because I don't want you to go and work for anyone else. And I don't want people to take up your time. But uh, I felt it's the, it was the right thing to do. So, uh, John, best of luck or a reasonable amount of luck with your work. And I hand over to you. Thank you very much for listening to me. I remember that first meeting when I came in and I slid a book across the table and said I used these as a business card and we looked at it and saw my name and it was, who reads these things? <laughs> Actually, I saw this book, it's rubbish, isn't it? It's so <laughs> academic and so hopelessly out of touch. And then I had to recover and um, you know, we're, we're, I'm extremely happy here, extremely happy to be doing things we do here, but it was, uh, it was one of my less good starts to a reason. <laughs> so I'm glad I've done the 36 hours work. Um, and thank you for your kind words. And I'm, I'm happy we're still talking to each other and, uh, after that start. Um, thank you everybody for coming. There's lots of people who know me here for varying degrees of time, but um, some old faces and some new faces. I went to a book launch once when the author spoke, I think chapter by chapter, through um, the, the entire thesis. <laughs> I, I'd like to summarise my new tone by what a friend of mine in California said, which is, he said, it's much better than your last two. <laughs> uh, which um, is quite high praise, so um, I hope. <laughs> Despite what Joan said himself that reason. But I would like to thank a few people, and I will inevitably forget throws of people that I should thank. There's a long <coughs> list of acknowledgements in the book, but I'd like to thank Wiley. Uh, of course, and the two players who are here for um, helping me write from the first inkling 
um, through to something that's on the shelves that looks really good. Um, I'd like to thank Iris, I think some of whom are here who did the cover and helped me with some of the marketing for the book. I'd like to thank Nada, who has single-handedly drummed up lots of PR that didn't exist, and uh, my wife who swore me. That we were in a conference once in Amsterdam and she was just snoozing because it was getting really boring. I spoke after several business professors, and I don't take credit for this, but the whole audience, and I told a story about my wife, the whole audience said about to look at her and she clearly was half asleep. <laughs> I so maybe swear not to mention this tonight, so we can spotlight it to us. Thank you. But she did the illustrations of my book. And uh, thank you to everybody who helped me, all the people whose ideas I lifted and published as my own. If I didn't acknowledge them, thank you. And to everybody who, who's here and worked with. Um, and I think I just need to say thank you again and then stop. Uh, please enjoy the facilities here. I hope I get around to talk to all of you. Thank you so much. And um, as they say of ships, God bless all who sail in there. I think that's enough, isn't it?